I have these two postcard watercolor papers and we'll compare these in today's video. Hello wonderful people! Many might not know that I love to send out postcards to friends and family. That's why I have been using pre-cut watercolor postcards for some years now. These two brands, Hahnemühle and AMI, are the ones I use most and I feel like it's something I have to talk about. Especially now that summer is here, many might want to try out plain air, go on vacation and maybe send a hand-painted postcards back home to friends and family. So let's take a closer look at the one first, then the other and in the end compare them both. For the paintings, I decided to go loose, have fun and just play around a little to see how the paint moves and how the paper behaves. Of course there are other postcard watercolor paper pads out there and all behave differently, but I happen to have these two and hope this video helps you make decisions. I will start with AMI. This is a cheap cellulose pad of watercolor paper, 300 gsm weight and 10.5 by 14.8 cm in size. It's a6 size. The block has 20 sheets but as you can see I have used up most of it and it's actually not the first block or pad that I have used. So it's about time to share this in a video. The paper structure is different from both sides. It doesn't look too mechanical and I actually enjoy working with it. Though it behaves like cellulose paper does, with sometimes backgrounds etc. I actually don't mind it on the postcards as those are usually quick sketches instead of finished pieces. It also works very well with ink and fountain pen that I use on the back side to write on. What I enjoy is the paper weight and that it's kind of sturdy. Though I would wish for a slightly thicker paper, even for postcards, as I love them to be firm. It does okay with masking tape, but it can rip when the masking tape is left on it for a bit longer. I suspect it won't go well with masking fluid though, and the ripping will be more. If you have a low adhesive tape and are careful, you can remove the tape without problems. By the way, if you wonder how I can send watercolor postcards through mail undamaged, I have a very old video on sealing watercolor on paper and I'm making an updating version with the twist. I don't want to spoil it now though. For now, cold wax medium works very well to seal watercolor postcards and make them waterproof. It's safe to be mailed and I had many postcards arrive at their destination undamaged. For this video I decided to play a little. Over the last few weeks I discovered a new joy in experimenting with colors and textures, which I did not have before to this extent. You can see how the color flows, creates shades and patterns and I will use the same colors or at least similar ones for the other paper too. The Hahnemühle postcards come in a pretty tin with a print. I have to admit that the tin is very pretty to look at. The lid is attached with hinges and won't fall off. The weight of the paper is only 230 gsm and although it says to have the same size of 10.5 by 14.8 cm on the packaging, it's actually a bit bigger. It's 10.5 by 15.3 cm. I wonder why the measurements on the packaging are off. The set comes with 13 postcards of which I have used a few to paint already and they have rounded corners which look somehow nice and feel special somehow. The lighter weight of the paper leads to buckling when painted with a wet wash which I did in both cases. While the front is textured in almost a linen-like pattern, the backside is smooth like hot press paper would be. There you too can find the print for address etc. Be mindful that I chose the rough surface for the Hahnemühle postcard, while AMI only offers cold press without announcement even. The postcards feel very thin and I have to admit that I don't like that in watercolor paper and not in postcards either. I feel like they can bend more easily during the mailing process. As AMI, the paper does okay with masking tape, but can rip when the tape is left in the paper for too long. Here too I would not advise to use masking fluid for the risk of ripping the paper. The joy of sending out postcards with unique impressions from my vacations, ideas and simple little paintings is something I am fond of and won't end quickly. To do that I do and will use more of these postcards. The AMI I have used even before I ended up painting as much watercolors as I do now and it's not the first pad that I've used up. Hahnemühle is supposed to be the replacement. So now that I have them both, I can compare and share this with you. I have to admit that painting on them both feels kind of similar, but also not. It's 
cell lost paper in both cases and it behaves like that. Being used to cotton, it's for sure different. The color of the white is very similar. Hanemühle might be a smidge more creamy, but it's not very noticeable. Both papers warp during the painting process, especially with lots of water, as I did in today's tests. The AMI kind of blows up like a cushion, but dries back relatively flat after. Hanemühle creates a double cushion and water flows into the crease in the center, which makes it a little bit difficult to pick it up and um, also to place colors just where you want to, as they will run into the center in a wet wash. Also, it will stay bent and warped after drying too and won't even itself out. That is due to the light paper weight of the postcards and I truly wish there were at least 300 GSM too, as it's just a better feeling. The paper texture of AMI is just like regular cold press paper and allows for even washes. It does show some granulation of colors but does not enhance it. The Hanemühle paper does enhance granulation due to the paper texture. Note that this is rough paper too. What I don't like about it is the linen texture that is highly visible after painting too and while I find it intriguing in some cases to create texture on paintings, I don't want it all the time. It bothers me that it's so symmetrical and not as I would expect rough paper to be. When it comes to price, so the AMI pad costs 9 euro 48 cents today on Amazon, which with 20 cards in a pad comes to 47 cents per postcard. Hanemühle that comes in a pretty tin costs 14 euros 55 cents on Amazon but contains 30 postcards. It's 48.5 cents per postcard. So price wise they're about the same with only a slight difference. After painting with them both for a while and these are not the first paintings I did on both papers, I kind of like the heavier paper more. For me it's the only reason why I prefer the AMI paper to Hanemühle. As the heavier weight is sturdier, warps less it just gives me a feeling of security when mailed. I don't have that with a lighter paper from Hanemühle that warps a lot and will arrive at the destination warped already. For me truly that is the biggest point. During my price research I've seen other companies offer watercolor postcards too which do have 300 GSM weight. Some are no name but there's also Van Gogh, Jackson and Haiku cards which I want to try out in the future but it also might be something worth trying out for you. Depending on what is cheaper for you and your current destination. I will leave all the links in the description box. But as I have not tried them out myself yet, I cannot offer opinions on them. Another option for your travels might be the Clairefontaine cotton watercolor sketchbooks, of which some come with uh, postcards in the back that you can remove. My Clairefontaine sketchbook has blotting paper, but the quality of the paper is nice. It's again on the thinner side though. I'll make a review soon, because the sketchbook is almost filled and I have to do a review before I finish it completely. I hope this little vi video is helpful in the case that you want to paint postcards and send them to friends. It's a gesture of love and people just don't receive postcards often enough nowadays. It's great to let beloved ones know that you're thinking about them and care with a simple little painting. Don't forget to seal them though. A link to the tutorial is in the description box as well as a link to the wax too. Have a wonderful and creative day everyone and I hope to see you soon. Bye!